Good afternoon. Welcome to our Aquarium Online Academy. It's time for Aquarium Live. Well, I hope you're excited to learn about how we feed and take care of the sea otters. We are unfortunately not going to get to watch that in place, but we're going to learn about how we take care of the animals in the food prep kitchen. And we're going to get to talk to Captain Joe a little bit today about our animals that live here and how we take care of them. Now, if you would like to text us questions, text us in at 562-286-1838. For those of our younger viewers, make sure you have an adult helping you out. Text rates do apply. But my friends here in the office are going to be helping to answer some of those questions. Luke is at the computer. He can give us some of your questions you text into him. And Dana is controlling the computer so that we can get to check in with Captain Joe. Now, even if you're not watching live, you can still participate. Go to this email here, live at lbaop.org, and you can email us your questions, even if you're watching at a different time than we originally aired the program. Well, today we're gonna to talk about what our animals get to eat. It's food time. Did everybody have a good lunch? I had a tasty lunch. Well, what happens when we have to give the animals food? There's a lot of work that goes into that and we don't always get to see that because it is behind the scenes, an area that most of our guests don't usually get to hang out in unless they're on a behind the scenes tour. But we'll get to talk a little bit with a couple of our experts here at the aquarium. But let's see what Captain Joe is doing, because I'm sure he's moseying around somewhere in the aquarium. Oh, hey, Captain Joe. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm Captain Joe of the Ocean Ranger, and I'm here with my co-host, Sea Otter, today in the Northern Pacific Gallery at the aquarium. And we're here to investigate about food today, Sea Otter. Now, I do know that food is one of your favorite things. Sea otters have a huge appetite. But unfortunately today, sea otter, we're not here to eat food. We're here to investigate food. I know. We're going to learn today about how our food is prepared for our animals and also how our food is fed out to our animals as well. So sea otter, let's team up. You go that way, find more about the preparation of the food, and I'll go this way and I'll find out more about how that food is given out to the animals. Ready? Let's do it. So we're going to investigate what we prepare and then how we give that food out to our animals. So even though we are running a little bit differently during this April, we still have to make sure that we feed the animals every day. So our husbandry staff, the caretakers of the animals, are still coming in every day to make sure that everyone is fed the right amount of food and the right time and also the right kinds of food. Well, let's think about some of the things that we have to feed. I wonder... Let's check out one of our webcams and we'll see if we can figure out how we might try to feed some of these animals because every exhibit is a little different. So how we feed them really depends on what lives inside that exhibit space. My friend Dana is going to pick an exhibit for us to check out. Oh, we get to look at Blue Cavern. This is our second largest exhibit. It's 142,000 gallons. That's a lot of water. It's also our deepest exhibit at 27 feet deep. Well, how does someone get in here to feed these animals? Hmm. Well, the windows I know that we get to look at them through, they're about nine inches thick. That's a pretty thick window. So there's a lot to go into this space. I bet the divers have to go way up to the top and climb in. Not every exhibit is easy to climb into either. Well, how do they get all the food to everybody? That's a good question. All the different animals that are in here, we have the little fish that hang out up top. Now, usually during the feeding times with the bigger fish, you're down here on the bottom. So we have to make sure that we're dividing the food out correctly to the right kinds of animals too. So these half moons are gonna have a very different diet 
Then the sardines that like to hang out way up top. Mm, and there's also a Garibaldi floating around back there. Now the Garibaldi, they're pretty feisty. They might come and try and take an other animal's food. A lot of fish are kind of feisty that way. So the people that are feeding, the dive team that's in there, have to try and make sure that they're giving the food to the right individuals. So they have a task. They only get to feed a certain range of animals. In the dive buckets that they have in there, they pull food out just for the right animal that comes to say hello. If the wrong animal shows up, and that often happens, they aren't supposed to give them any food because we want the animals to go to the right zone inside the exhibit to make sure they're feeding in the right areas. Well, we already have some questions coming in. Great, let's see if we can answer some of these. Gage is asking, can, octop or can otters eat octopus? Ooh, that is a good question. And Junie's asking, how do sea otters crack clamshells? Well, you are both asking very good questions about how otters get to eat the stuff they need to eat. So before we talk about what we feed the otters here at the aquarium, let's investigate. Now I have a shell. I have a couple of shelled things. Let's see if we can show them to you. All right, so I have this shell. This is a scallop shell and then I have this one this is a cowrie snail now this may not be the actual snail that a a uh, sea otter would eat but maybe this would be a shell they use as a tool so how they get to eat those things if they have shells don't worry Gage we'll talk about how they eat octopus too because octopus are kind of feisty in their own way well if you were a sea otter you would have a special pocket in your armpit do you like to store things in your armpits probably not they're not big enough if you were a sea otter though, they have a lot of extra skin in their armpit and they could hide it. Kind of like I have a pocket in my vest. I can hide stuff in my vest and I can carry it wherever I go. Well, a sea otter is a little different, but they take their favorite tool that they can use to crack open the shells. So they grab their food off the floor, they swim down, pick it up, and then they go up to the surface of the water and they lay on their back. And then they take their favorite tool and they crack open the shell. They're not especially strong at doing that, but how fast that they would smash that shell or rock or other object on the shells will break it open and then they can eat the animal that's inside. Well, they don't need that shell if they're eating an octopus, but they do tend to eat animals that don't have shells. Now, a sea otter might be able to grab an octopus, but an octopus will probably want to fight back on its own way. There are other marine mammals that do eat a lot of octopus. So if you were a mammal and you wanted to find an octopus, how does the octopus hide? And we've talked a lot about octopus in the last few days. Have you been watching? Do you remember what we were talking about? Hmm. An octopus can hide in lots of little nooks and crannies because their bodies are super squishy and soft. They can fit into any space that their mouth can fit. That's the only hard part in their body. So be, they might be in some really small spaces Kind of tough to find your prey down there the other thing is they can color change they have special cells in their skin called chromatophores where they can change the color of the objects they're sitting on and they can change the texture of their skin so it's pretty tough to be able to find an octopus but if you're lucky enough or even a smart enough otter you might find one you got to do the same thing you have to take it up to the surface and start to eat the animal problem with otters is their fur is kind of delicate so I have a sample of otter fur. I'm going to grab for us. Now this is actual otter fur. It's not from one of our otters. Don't worry. This is a sample that was given to us, uh, I think by the Department of uh, Wildlife, Fish, and Game. And their fur is so dense, it protects them so that they can stay warm. They don't have any blubber like a sea lion does, so they really need the warmth of this fur to help them stay warm in the water. Octopus have little suction cups they can use that they can mess up the fur of an otter. So an otter has to be very careful of the kinds of food items they grab so that it doesn't mess up their fur. They don't even like to just eat sea stars without putting sea star feet against something else because the sea star feet will stick to all of their fur. But sea otters do have very powerful uh, teeth and jaws to be able to grab and tear their food with. So if you do catch an octopus as an otter, chances are you have the option to be able to eat it. But another interesting thing about how sea otters learn to eat is the babies, the pups, they learn from mom how to hunt. Do our parents teach us things about how we can do all of our daily functions? Yeah, and the same thing for the animal world. A lot of animals learn from their parents. So the baby otters learn what to hunt 
And if mom doesn't know how to hunt it, the baby doesn't usually learn how to hunt that either. So if mom knows how to hunt an octopus, their babies will eventually learn how to hunt octopus too. That's pretty interesting to think about. All right, well, I would imagine our sea otter friend has probably found where the kitchen is. We should probably check in and see what they're doing inside our kitchen. All right, that's a great question. First of all, my name is Ron Mortensen, and I'm the assistant curator here for the bird and mammal group. Behind us, we have the food prep room. This is where all the food for all the animals, including you, comes from. All right, sea otter, well, as you can tell, this is a busy time in the morning. This is food preparation time. Behind you, we have food preparation going on for the fishes. Over here, we have food preparation going on for the sea otters. Anyone interested in that? Yeah. Food preparation going on for the birds. And finally, over here, we have food preparation going on for the seals and the sea lions. So we got a lot of food preparation going on in this room at this time of day, every day. All right, sea otters. So here we've got food prep going on for all your little otter buddies. We have to divide it up so we know who gets which because each otter gets a little bit different food. You can see these are smaller bins. We got larger bins over here. We mix all their food together and then we take it out and we put it into these nice stainless steel bins which we wear on our pouch right here on our hips. So when we go in to feed, we have our hands free. That works out really well. You can see we have shrimp, we have clams, and we have squid. As a matter of fact, I think I still have some squid I need to cut up. You want to help me? All right. And we just weigh everything out based on what each otter needs. And each one's a little different. So we'll just cut up this squid here. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. This isn't yours. We'll just get this all cut up here. And they can eat whole squid, but the reason we cut it up is because it makes it easier for training. It gives us bite-sized pieces, kind of like popcorn to a sea otter, so that works out really well. Of course, seals and sea lions swallow their food whole, so we can feed them pretty big fish without having to worry about that. But sea otters chew their food. And we're done. We will just put this in the bin. That's really interesting. So we have to make sure that not only are we prepping the food in a clean, sanitary kitchen for all the animals? We have to make sure they get all the right amount and then divide it to each otter. Did you hear what Ron said? Sea otter popcorn is squid. Do you like squid? I mean, I do like squid, but I will stick with a regular popcorn for me. Now, don't forget, you can text us in some questions here at our studio at 562-286-1838. Our staff are hurriedly working to help answer some of your questions, and we'll answer as many as we can on the air as well. But if you'd like to ask some questions about how we prep food and how we feed it out to our animals, please feel free to text in to us. Now, we had a question from Hannah. Do the animals that live together ever eat each other? That is a good concern if you want to have multiple animals live in a large space. Now, we try to pick the animals to live together that are the most likely to live together in a good way. But also, we offer them food very, very frequently, if not every day. Some animals are offered food multiple times a day to make sure that they are especially full so they don't try to eat anybody else in their habitat. Now, normally out in the ocean, that's a normal thing that happens. Animals that become hungry have to hunt or scavenge for their food. Well, because we feed them here at the aquarium, there's always a food delivery service ready for them. They really don't ever worry about where to find food because it's gonna show up pretty frequently for them. Okay, let's think about prepping and dividing out the food. Everybody has to get the right amount. Have you ever helped prepare food in the kitchen before? Maybe you have, if you haven't, that's okay. When you're preparing food for everybody, you try to prepare enough for the entire group to eat. And you sometimes have to use some of the math to figure out how much should you make for all the, the things or people that are eating. Well, for our animals here in our exhibits, our aquarists and our mammologists have a very tough job to try and calculate how much food we should be giving out. But the great thing is the food that we get, we know how many calories and how, much, uh, how many vitamins and all the nutritional information they need to make sure that they can create the best diet or best a range of food, arrangement of food to give to our animals. Now those charts that they have, those are in our food prep kitchen too. So we can make sure we're feeding the right amount to the right animal. And the different bins or containers that that food goes into will go to the, either the correct exhibit or the correct individual animal. Now, if you ever do get a chance to see 
the divers feeding the animals. It's the same thing as those dive buckets. It's not random as to what goes in there. It's a specific volume of food. Did you see Rob using the scale in there too? We weigh the food out to make sure we're giving them the right amount of food. So that way we know how much our animals are eating. At Shark Lagoon, the big sharks, we even record how much food they don't eat. So we weigh out the, all the food that we prepared that day and whatever they don't eat, we record that and write that down too. Because that could mean something important for our animal's health. So we want to make sure that we're doing all the things we need to, to make sure the animals are eating. Well, I think Rob is going to talk a little bit more about how we divide the food to all the different animals, at least our mammals anyways. Let's check back in with Rob in the kitchen. Well, you're probably wondering how we keep it all together and we get everybody to the right amount of food. The way that we do that is by using these dry erase boards. And each one of the animals is listed on there by name and also by color. Their color corresponds to their bucket. They have a little tag on there, so we always know, for instance, Shelby always has the bucket with the blue tag. The blue is her color. It's also the shape in the case of the animal so that we can hold up a shape and get them to come to us wherever we're at in the exhibit. So we have to keep charts, lots and lots of charts of all the different animals that we need to feed out. That can be pretty time intensive, but we have so many staff and volunteers that work for the Aquarium of the Pacific. It makes it quick work to make sure that we can make sure or so that we can make sure that everybody's getting all the food they're supposed to. All right, we had a few more questions come in. Isaac is asking, can otters eat anemones? That is interesting. I'm not sure I've ever seen or heard of an otter eating an anemone. Now, anemones are very soft and squishy. So we probably could see an otter eat one at some point, but I've never heard of that happening. Anemones do have very sticky tentacles. If you've never touched an otter or an anemone tentacle before, it's a really fun experience. We have touch pools here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and once everybody's available to come back to the aquarium, they can experience that too. But when you touch the tentacles of anemones, they kind of stick to you. And what they're doing is they're trying to sting your skin. Our skin is very strong, so we don't really feel the sting from the anemone, but it still sticks to us kind of like sticky tape. Well, if you're an otter, remember, your fur keeps you warm. It's very important to make sure that your fur stays at the top of its quality. So you, otters will groom and clean themselves. We check the otters to make sure there's no scratches on their bodies. But if you have an animal that's going to stick and mess up your fur too much, that could make sure, or that could mean that you can't make sure it's always healthy. And that might mean that you get too cold in your cold Northern Pacific habitat. Okay. Miguelito is asking, how do sea otters breathe? Well, otters are mammals just like us. So what do we do when we have to breathe? <gasps> we use our lungs. Now we hold our breath if we're going to go dive in the water or we have special equipment to go diving with. If an otter is in the water, what is it doing? When they're at the surface, they can breathe just like normal. But when they go down in the water, they have to do the same thing we do. They hold their breath. So they can hold their breath almost three to five minutes on an average dive and they can go up to 100 feet down in the water. That's a quick dive for 100 feet of water, but that's pretty much the depth of the kelp forest habitat where they live. So if otters are feeding off the ground in the kelp forest habitat, they have a very short range and they don't need a whole lot of time to get down there to pick things up off the ground and eat them. Okay, Jaden is asking, how do you feed the sharks? That's an interesting question too. We're going to see what we do to feed the mammals here, but how would we feed sharks? Do you think we have the caretakers walking around in the exhibit and just chucking food at the animals? Well, yes and no. The small sharks that live at Shark Lagoon in our touch pool, they get what's called a scatter feed. We just have a, a bundle of food and we just scatter it, throw it out into the water, and they get all excited and they all move around and start eating. But the bigger sharks, we do what's called a target feed, which is very similar to what you'll see for our seals and sea lions too. And what that means is you're trying to feed one individual shark. Now, that I don't have an example of it, but we would use grippers to dip into the water. And when the shark we want to feed swims by, you can release the food to that one individual animal. Let's see if we can take a look at our shark lagoon habitat. And we'll show you how challenging it can be to try and feed animals in our big shark lagoon. It's not as easy as it sounds. It might seem like it, oh, we'll just give it to that one shark. Remember, there's a lot of animals that live in all of our exhibits, so it's sometimes tougher to make sure we're getting the right food item to the right animal. 
Now, I used to volunteer as an aquarist, a person that takes care of fish. And I can tell you, trying to feed the correct animal in the water when everybody else wants to grab the food is not as easy as they think it is. So here's our shark lagoon. This is a pretty big space. Now, the sharks are the biggest ones in there, but there's a lot of other fish that live in here, too. And the sharks are always moving around, especially during a feeding time. They're all excited to really find the food. So if you're there, we use this extra tool. So if you're looking down on the water, we not only have the gripper with the food, we have this other target item. It could be like a frisbee. It could be a ball on a stick. And you put that in the water and you wait for the right animal to come by. They boop it with their nose and you release the food to the right shark. If it's the wrong shark, you don't release the food to them. Now, we train the sharks to learn their target, either the shape or the color or the type of item that is being used, so they all learn which item to go to. That way we can feed them in different areas of the exhibit, so they're not all trying to feed in one space, making it even tougher for the staff member to try and feed them. Pretty good question, and we'll, see, we'll check in in a little bit, see how that's working with feeding some of our mammals. Okay, questions we have. Why does each otter have different food? And how many pounds of food per day do otters eat? Well, they're fed, the otters are fed about four times a day through four different feeds. That was also a question. How many times should we feed them? Sea otters have an amazing appetite. I wish I had metabolism like an otter. Metabolism is how fast we break down our food, how many calories we burn just being normal. Now, if we need to burn extra calories, we go exercise and work out so that we can try and lose weight. Well, an otter doesn't really need to do that. An otter can eat up to 25% of its body weight every day. Now, imagine you're a sea otter. You're a pretty cute animal. I actually have a stuffed animal sea otter we can use as an example. And it's actually pretty close to the real size. So, you're a sea otter, floating along, doing sea otter things. If you're about a 60-pound southern sea otter, you could eat 15 to 20 pounds of food per day. I don't even know where they pack it all in. That's a lot of food. They burn so many calories, they, their body uses them up naturally that they have to eat that much food every day to survive. We people, we don't eat nearly that much. We might only eat about three to 5% of our body weight per day. Otters can eat 25% or more and that helps them stay warm. So we have body heat that's released when we break down our food, they do too. So the warm fur and their high metabolism that releases a lot of body heat make sure that they can stay warm in their super cold habitat. All right, let's see if Captain Joe found where we're feeding some animals. Let's see, where's Captain Joe at? Welcome back, boys and girls. We're here investigating how we feed our fish at the aquarium. Captain Joe, why are you in a wetsuit? Well. While I was investigating, I found out that we have scuba divers that help us feed all of our animals. And to make sure that all of the animals are getting fed in our large exhibits, like this big one behind me, they actually get inside of the water and help feed all of the animals. Oh, okay, that sounds like a plan. We were talking a little bit about how the divers get in. Now, if you wanna learn more about diving, yesterday we had a program about the science, or not yesterday, Tuesday. About the science of diving. You can go check out our video about how we dive here at the aquarium and how you can dive out in the ocean. Well, that's pretty interesting how the divers get in the water, but whatever happened to our sea otter friend? They were in the kitchen with Rob, but where did they go? Let's see, where did the sea otter get head to? Uh, I think Dana's trying to help us find the sea otter sneaking around. She's looking on the computer and she can't find it. Where did that sea otter go? Hey, oh, there you are. Wait, sea otter, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be eating that. Sea otter. Oh, she's trying oh, to steal no, some no, of the no, food. No, that's, not that's, that's not your food. That's not your food. Your food's in the refrigerator. Let's put this with your food and we'll go get yours. Your feeding time's coming. Come on. All right, sea otter. You ready to see where we keep your food? We keep it in the refrigerator. Let's go on in here. Here we are. This is the refrigerator. I know it's cold. You should be good with that fur. I don't have fur on. I had to wear my sweatshirt. Here's your food right here. You can see your little bin is already gone. It's on its way up to the exhibit. So we got to get up there so that you can go get your food for the morning. So we have a huge refrigerator and freezer that we have to store all of our food 
when we're here at the aquarium to make sure that it's fresh for the animals. We have to thaw it out for a couple of days too to make sure that it's well thawed. We can't just microwave it or throw it in the sink and thaw it out. We have to wait for it to naturally thaw out for a short period of time in our walk-in refrigerator. Now, don't forget, you can still text in questions here at our studio at 562-286-1838. Savannah is asking, are the animals picky about their food and do they reject some of their food or do they eat everything? Well, Savannah, our animals tend to be fairly picky eaters, just like me. I have my preferences. We all have our favorite kinds of food and even the sea otters have their favorites. I will tell you, even though we prepare squid for the sea otters, they generally don't like the squid. They much prefer the clam and the shrimp that we feed them here at the aquarium. Now, sometimes we get some special food items in. Um, every once in a while, we get something that another zoo aquarium couldn't use. So they'll send it to us so that we can feed it to our animals. And if the otters don't know a whole lot about it, they may not actually want to eat it. Now, even our sharks and our fish have a preference of types of food they eat, which we would think that a shark would just want to eat whatever. Turns out they have their favorite kinds of food, too. All right. See, we have more. Dylan's asking, do otters eat sea urchins? Yes, they do. I have a sea, uh, sea urchin shell right here. It's just the shell. We call it a sea urchin test. All the spines have fallen off, but they will. How would you want to eat a sea urchin if you were a sea otter? If they all got all these pokey spines everywhere, oh, it's going to be kind of painful. Well, the sea otters can pick them up, pry them off the ground. And what they'll do is they'll start pulling the spines off and remember, they keep that shell in their armpit, and then they'll crack that open. So they do love to eat sea urchins. Now, do the otters have any food allergies? That I don't know. We do know that a lot of animals can react to food that they eat. In terms of if it's an allergy, like when we have allergies, I haven't heard any research about that, but it's possible that some animals will just naturally avoid items that make them feel sick or not very well. Have you ever wondered why you prefer to eat some foods other, over others? Sometimes it's your own body telling you things you do or do not like or are not so much good for your body. Well, we have just a few minutes left. I'm sure we should check out what happens if an animal's sick. So good question about allergies and maybe something making an animal sick. Let's see what's going on at our Molina Animal Care Center and see if Cher can tell us a little bit more about what happens if an animal is sick and how, how we can help them out. What's uh, Shara doing there, Dana? Welcome, Ocean Rangers. My name is Shara Seals. I am a veterinary technician here at the Molina Animal Care Center. This is our vet hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I work with Dr. Lance Adams, our veterinarian. Do you guys ever go to the dentist? Yeah, me too. Well, some of our animals here at the aquarium need to go to the dentist as well. So today we're going to clean some teeth on a sea otter. In the wild, sea otters use shells like clams and urchins to naturally brush their teeth. But here in the aquarium, we help them out a little bit. We don't feed them shells. We take them to the dentist once a day they get their teeth brushed with a toothbrush, just like us. And then once a year, when the otters come for their dentist appointment, they have the same thing done as you and I would when we go. Let's go over some of the tools that we use to clean their teeth. Here we have a fake plastic otter skull. This shows you what their teeth look like. This is a polisher. This polisher is used to polish their teeth. So we have to use toothpaste as well. And this is bubblegum flavored. Use this toothpaste with the polisher to polish their teeth. And we make sure we get all the crevices. We also use this scaler. This gets in between the teeth where the polisher doesn't reach. And then we also have hand tools that we can use. These kind of act as dental floss. They can get in the really small crevices so we can pick all of the plaque out and keep their teeth clean. All right, now that you guys have seen some of the tools that we use to clean their teeth, let's do it for real. Today, we're gonna clean one of our sea otters, Betty. 
Got to put my protective gear on. One thing though, they have to be asleep when we do this. So it's better for them and it's easier for us. So let's go check it out. Well, that's pretty interesting about how otters and animals that need their teeth cleaned go to the dentist here, right here at our Aquarium of the Pacific Molina Animal Care Center Animal Hospital. Well, if they're eating so much food, I'm sure the otters have to make sure their teeth are perfectly healthy. We had a few more questions come into the uh, office. We have one from Art. How fast can otters swim? They are pretty quick. They're faster than most of us. They're probably about as fast as an Olympic swimmer. But since they scavenge, they really don't chase anybody around because they're grabbing animals off the floor. They don't have to swim very fast to catch them. It's like if you had to chase around your toys on the floor. Well, maybe some of them move. But most of the time, they're just kind of hanging out. And it doesn't take a whole lot of energy to round them all up. Now, uh, Annika or Anika, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, is how do you feed the jellyfish? That's a good question because we talked about the big chunks of food that we feed to the big animals. Well, what about the animals that eat plankton? I actually got to see our uh, aquarist, Josh, hanging out by the sea jellies earlier today when I was eating my lunch. The jellies were eating lunch too. We give them a kind of plankton called brine shrimp. Now, instead of just having big chunks of food, it's in a container of water. So the brine shrimp are very tiny. And all we have to do is either use a, like a big syringe to just squirt the water around, or we can even just pour some of the plankton into the exhibit and it'll float around and the jellies float around and run into their food. So we really don't have to work too hard to feed the jellies, but we do have to make sure we're preparing their food in the right way. Olivia has asked, how long do sea otters live? Sea otters might live 8 to 12 years old when they're out in the ocean. But here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we were able to have two of the oldest sea otters under human care. Because there's a vet doctor on site, because we have constant care for our animals, and because our staff takes such good care of them, we had two otters. Unfortunately, they passed away. But we had two otters that lived to be 21 and 22 years old. That was Charlie and Brooke very special otters to us here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and we're very sad to see that they had passed away. But all things have a time limit that they can live on this planet. So we do our best to make sure that we're providing the best care for them and the tastiest food for them while they're here. Okay, Melissa's asking, do otters have pouches like kangaroos? We talked about the armpit pouch, not quite like a kangaroo pouch. Do you know what a pouch and a kangaroo is for? It's for their babies. So kangaroos are a special kind of animal that their baby is growing in the pouch. That deep armpit pocket that a sea otter has is so it can store a shell or even food. I've seen a couple of our otters sneak some snacks into their armpits so they can eat them after the training session is done. It's pretty fun and we don't mind that they do it because we know they're still eating all the food they're supposed to. Well, that's a lot of great information and great questions from you, our viewers, about how we feed and take care of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. We appreciate all the time that you have spent with us, and we want you to keep learning from us, too. Now, our program we have after this is... Hold on, i got to read the sign. <gasps> about sharks and teeth. Well, guess what? You can even ask more questions about food to our educator that will be going over sharks and shark adaptations and their teeth. Well, from all of us here at the studio and the Aquarium of the Pacific, thank you for joining and watching our Aquarium Online Academy. We'll see you next time.